phrase that actually caught my attention this morning, as opposed to last night at the Mass, was, many will try to enter, but won't be, did you remember what it said? Strong enough. Yeah, I'm going to circle around to that. Uh, because we want souls that are capacitated, souls that are strong, uh, able uh, to do that work God's called us to do. But then we had all this reading about discipline, about how the Lord disciplines us. And whoever God loves, he disciplines. So don't complain about the discipline. It's God's love. And uh, some of you have little kids. I once upon a time had little kids. They're all grown now, uh, two-thirds married. And I remember one that was so hard to discipline. I remember sitting at Mass one time, a daily Mass, and it was like uh, he was four and just impossible. And I'm like, oh, God, what am I going to do with him? I don't want to say his name because <laughs> he teaches at Powers now. <sighs> so God just spoke right into my heart. He said, love him. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, that. Like, that's going to work. And so I knew I just really had to love him into this. And uh, I remember once, just I, was try I had tried every single discipline in the world for kids. He probably at this time was about eight or nine or ten. And uh, wouldn't stay in a corner. You'd put him in a corner, but he wouldn't face it. He would just walk around and... He wouldn't sit out, he wouldn't, he couldn't, spanking didn't work, and nothing worked. So I'm like, just come and sit on my lap. I'll be watching a football game, and we would just spend time together. That was my discipline with him. Just come and sit on my lap. And that was his time out, sitting with Dad, watching football or whatever. And man, we bonded. We just really got to love one another and bond, and I think he looked forward to you know, his time out time where, where we got to do that time together. And I think that's more of God's discipline in our lives. We don't feel it that way. We feel, uh, I think my oldest son, he said, I always hated it that after discipline, you made me sit on your lap and you told me you do it because you love me. He said, I hated that the most. <laughs> yeah, and I think we do too. Uh, anyone here have one of those kids? That was like impossible, yeah? Yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't figure out what to do or how to do it, yeah. Anyone here is that kid? <laughs> yeah, and you're that kid with God too, you know? God's, God's like, what am I gonna do with you, <laughs> you know? And he's like, oh yeah, I remember. I'm gonna love you. And that's what God does. Uh, God doesn't discipline anyone except out of love and to make us stronger so that as we try to enter in to heaven, how many know that when we come to church, you ever notice we always enter in, we don't just start already seated up here? There's an entering in. Do you notice that? There's a cross and there's candles and there's an entrance right and all that sort of thing. And it's so you will remember that you're not supposed to just show up to Mass. You are supposed to enter in. And you're supposed to enter into God, into his presence. And so we'll talk about the Mass in the coming series, and it'll be really fun. And that'll be our first one uh, of the Mass, probably in four weeks, will be the entrance. Right. Did you enter in today? Did you enter into God's presence? Did you enter into that heavenly reality where God is? Is heaven and earth come together for you today? So, okay, none of that's part of the homily. I just was thinking about trying to discipline my son when I had little ones. Uh, praise God, I have grandkids now. How many know God has no grandkids? He has all children. And I think it's because all you do is spoil your grandkids. I don't discipline them at all. They get to do whatever they want, eat cake all day long. Yeah, so, yeah, it's out of love. It's out of love and to live in that. So what I want to talk about was that strength a little bit, and I want to talk about this fellow named uh, St. Um, Christopher. 
And uh, St. Christopher uh, has a story, and it's more a, a legend than anything. I'm pretty sure it's not true, but it's a beautiful legend. And he was a big man. In fact, he was like a giant. And he was the strongest man in the kingdom. And so the king made him second in the kingdom because he was so impressive, so big, so strong. And so one day he's with the king and they're singing together, singing songs. And one of the songs mentioned the devil. And so uh, the king, when the devil was mentioned in the song, crossed himself. And St. Christopher said, why'd you do that? And the king said, well, because they mentioned the devil. And he said, yeah, but why, why'd you cross yourself? And he goes, well, because um, it's protection. I wanted protection from the devil. And St. Christopher said, are you afraid of the devil? And the king said, yeah. And St. Christopher said, well, I can't serve you. If you're afraid of the devil, he's more powerful than you. I'm going to serve the devil. So he goes out to find the devil. And on his journey, he comes across some knights that are wicked, evil. One of them's more wicked, more evil than any of them. And uh, he says to St. Christopher, what are you, where are you going? And he says, I'm looking for the devil because I heard he's more powerful and uh, I want to serve him. And that wicked knight said, well, I'm actually the devil. And uh, so St. Christopher started to walk with him, to journey with him and serve him. But one time they were walking down a road and the sign of the cross was right in the road. And St. Christopher noticed that the devil saw that and walked way around, <laughs> wanted nothing to do with it. And when he got by it, went back onto the road. And St. Christopher said, why did you do that? And the devil said, well, because uh, the sign of the cross is there. And he said, well, what's that? He said, well, once upon... once." Once, 2,000 years ago, or however long it was in his day, um, a man, Jesus, who was God with us, uh, died on a cross. And now that cross, that sign has power over me, and I want nothing to do with it. And so St. Christopher said, well, if he's more powerful than you, I won't serve you. I'll serve Jesus. And so he set out to find Jesus, to serve him. And in the process, the journey, he runs into a hermit. And he, the hermit says, what are you doing? And he says, well, I'm looking for Jesus so I can serve him. I heard he's more powerful than anyone. And the hermit, he said, the hermit said, well, if you want to serve Jesus, here's what you can do. You can fast a lot and pray, and that'll be how you serve Jesus. St. Christopher, being a big man, obviously didn't do a lot of fasting in his day. St. Christopher says, yeah, you know, I really don't do fasting. <laughs> yeah, what else do you got? And the hermit said, well, okay, you don't have to fast. You can get up early in the morning, and you can do hours of prayer every morning. And St. Christopher said, well, yeah, I don't do mornings either. And he said, what else do you got? And the hermit said, well, here we are by the river, you can live here at the river, and it's a very strong river, and anyone who needs help across the river, anyone who's too weak because you're so strong, you take them over the river. You help them cross the river. And St. Christopher's like, yeah, that I can do. I can do that. And once there was a little boy crossing the river, and uh, he couldn't seem to make it, and so St. Christopher went to help him and put him up on his shoulders, and... Uh, as they got into deeper and deeper in the river, the little boy became heavier and heavier to where when they were in the very strongest, deepest part of the river, the boy felt like the weight of the world was on St. Christopher's shoulders. And so uh, St. Christopher feared for the first time that he wouldn't make it, that he himself was going to drown and die. But somehow he was able to muster the strength and get to the other side, and he said to the boy, what was that? I felt like I had the weight of the world on my shoulders. And the boy said, I'm Jesus whom you serve. And you not only had the weight of the world, but you had the whole creator of the world on your shoulders as well. And he blessed him and gave him a sign, a blessing to where his staff would bloom with flowers and buds. And so the story of St. Christopher 
is all about like that opening video where it says so often we go with the crowd. And St. Christopher decided he was going to serve Jesus alone. And he would be the only one that he serves, not this world, and that he would serve Jesus by helping other people, by serving other people. And so we made it our, our motto, uh, serve God, love people, make disciples. We could switch that, love God, serve people even, and make disciples. We've been doing so many weddings with our young people lately. They told me, my team told me, we're going to make our motto or our missionary or our vision statement, uh, serve God, love people, make couples. Oh, come on. You can laugh. So, yeah. Enter in. Today it says, enter into the narrow gate. Enter into that gate. Did you enter in today? How many will be saved? Jesus doesn't say, but he says many won't be strong enough. He says what you have to be able to do is enter in. So don't show up to Mass. The Pope said a lot of people show up to Mass and they're just spiritual tourists. They're just Catholic tourists. They're not really entering in. They're just really like visiting the catacombs or visiting Rome and looking around and part of it. But so that ability to enter in and to eat of the Eucharist in such a way that you realize that Jesus came to serve, not to be served, and that if we eat that sacrifice, we have to then make ourselves a sacrifice. We have to become the sacrifice. And we have to also say, I'm not here to be served, I'm here to serve. That's part of entering in. We enter into the mystery of the Eucharist where we become servants of all, the least of all. We become greatest by becoming the least and the servant of all. And we become a sacrifice. We give ourselves away. And let me close with this word, strive. He said strive to enter the narrow gate. That word strive is the same Greek word used for like Olympic athletes in the time of Jesus. People who every day would practice and exercise and strive so that they could win when the competition came about. And so we're called to practice our faith every day to where when the competition comes, we're able to win. We're able to run the race in such a way as to win. And so we are strong enough because we live out our faith every day. We practice every day. We serve Jesus alone, and we do it by serving one another. That's our faith. That's how many get in. Those who are strong enough, those who capacitate their soul by striving, by doing the practice, the work, serving God and one another. What a wonderful call. What a wonderful journey. What a wonderful faith we have. I think most of the problems of the church are problems of faith. So I think we become political instead of becoming a follower of Jesus. And um, it's all a problem of faith. We begin to follow the world because we don't know if this is so true. Let's profess our faith. Let's be believers. And let's not believe just about Jesus. Let's believe into him. Let's enter in by our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not.